Hey, welcome. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. This is the uh, sorry. This is the OKD. I want to get their title right. This is the OKD Working Group Hybrid Meetup, and uh, your hosts today are going to be Christian Glombeck and Vadim Rutos Rud Rudkowski. <laughs> uh, Christian is an engineer at Red Hat. Um, he's working on OpenShift. He's an OpenShift specialist. Uh, he's an op on the OpenShift specialist platform team and a member of the OKD working group. Uh, Vadim is a software engineer at Red Hat, and that's all he wants to say about himself. But I will say he's also a tremendous engineer, and he knows OpenShift and OKD top to bottom. So without further ado, Krishna and Vadim, please take it away. Thanks, Mike. Uh, I hope my audio works fine now. I had issues earlier. I, yeah, not sure what that was about. OK, it's perfect. It's better now. OK, awesome. Uh, so we haven't really prepared um, any special agenda, I think. Um, so if, maybe we can uh, kind of, as we always do in the working group meetings, give a quick engineering update where we're at um, and then kind of make it an open floor session. Uh, I was hoping that there might be some questions or you know, people uh, wanting to talk about what they're doing with OKD. Um, so really, yeah. Vadim, would you, would you uh, be able to give a quick up update on our current? current yeah, period? sure. Um, I mean, last time we met on DEF CON, we did this tour. I think it's useful to look back and see, um, describe our progress for the whole year. Uh, it was a very, very fruitful year for OKD, mostly because we were committed to staying along with features of the OCP Alliance. And um, we still had a few packages forked, which is installer and MCO, uh, quite critical for the cluster lifecycle. And we're working a lot with internal teams to uh, to shorten this gap. And now installer is fully coming from upstream. We are getting the fixes OCP is getting immediately into OKD. Um, and the very same story is happening with MCO. We have just merged our final uh, fix we need. And now we can use upstream version with MCO with one small exception, which I'll cover slightly later. Uh, next, I remember in the summer we did a uh, short OKD conference that was very, very exciting. We had multiple tracks where folks were describing how they're using OKD with um, folks from university with a quite large scale of um, usage and different kind of types of users. I was participating in um, home server type of stuff where you are tailoring OKD for your own users. Usually it's just one node with additional workers and so on. That was very exciting to see how uh, the OKD usage varies across different people coming from there. Uh, next, we were working on a largely delayed feature of uh, bare metal API, and it should be available in 4.10 now. Um, we don't have a great set of resources to check this out in CI, so we would be relying on uh, people's feedback and drive there. But um, the idea behind this is just to stay uh, on, to stay uh, same as uh, to, to have the same features as the OCP has. Um, now, for the current state, our actively uh, stable version is for nine. I don't think there has been quite a significant set of changes for a, a set of changes since last release. So we're mostly staying there. The only um, problem which we now have is that we're still using Fedora 34 because of a combination of Kubernetes and Linux box. One conformance test is failing on Fedora 34 right now. So we need to rebase to Kubernetes 1.22.5, I believe, and so, which is supposed to be happening in a couple of weeks. But we're being quite conservative there. And we would rather deliver a stable platform for the users than rush with the new features. Meanwhile, we're cooking things which are coming in 4.10. 
the port then has been rebased to Kubernetes 123. We have the fix and we were able to update to the latest Fedora 35. Uh, one of the interesting kind of features we have delivered this year was uh, Cgroups v2 by default. Uh, previously, the Fedora uh, CoreOS switched to Cgroups v2 for quite a long time ago, but the Kubernetes upstream has been lagging for a couple of years before Cgroups v2 was uh, even supported and then ready to use. And now we have transparently switched the new installations into Cgroups v2. Uh, since there are no additional features which this uh, switch brings, it should be fairly transparent to our users, but that opens the road for more interesting things like uh, limiting pods by I.O. consumption, which Cgroup v1 does not support, but Cgroups v2 supports. So we need is a, a support in CRI for this kind of a feature. Another interesting uh, Cgroup v2 thing, which will might be available soon, is apart from min and max, there is also um, I believe it's something like med called or so. Uh, so so a setting for a memory where instead of just request and limit, you can also set up a threshold where your application is supposed to start garbage collecting its memory. It's incredibly useful for Java applications where instead of fully crashing, you just tell it that the, the app is using way too much memory. It's supposed to start garbage collecting. Uh, that's supposed to help workloads to be more resilient. Instead of just crashing with OM, it would start uh, uh, cleaning the memory. And uh, for 10, uh, I mentioned that we're based to Fedora 35, right? Um, and the bare metal API is coming there. That should help folks who have access to IPMI and ILO and use these kind of bare metal installations as an API target instead of UPI previously. Um, also, behind the scenes, we're working on some more features. The most interesting from my side would be assistant installer. That's a, a tech preview in OCP now, but incredibly exciting for um, OKD users. In short, it's a, it's a web app, which is able to generate a so-called discovery ISO. When you boot your machine from the discovery ISO, this machine would be added and show up in the server um, where you would be able to pick uh, the role there and say, this machine would be master, this one machine would be worker. That helps you to find issues with the configurations before the installation has started, say, uh, your resources are insufficient and the application will tell you immediately about that or your network and host name, a very, very common case of failed installations are wrong. So. Uh, that would be immediately showed up before the installation has started. Um, another bonus with assistant installer is that it doesn't use separate bootstrap node. Instead, it uses one of the masters, even if it's a single master, as a bootstrap node. Uh, so uh, so-called bootstrap in place uh, is already implemented as a part of the uh, assistant installer. There is some quite some work we need to do with installer and as it's installer folks as well, but um, that feature is definitely what we would be paying more attention in the future. And just to add to that, I'm I'm incredibly excited about the assisted installer as well, um, and it it's especially useful obviously for bare, bare metal, but it's also interesting for use cases on platforms that don't really have uh, Fedora Core OS support yet. Um, you can kind of just, if, if you can get the image to boot on a platform, you can use it. And the the agent really makes it easy to, to figure out those issues because it will talk to the to the assisted installer service, which is the web the web app, which there is one hosted by Red Hat, but you can also deploy that yourself if you want to um, host your own service there. Um, and yeah, that, that is really great. And hopefully that'll um, make it much easier in the future to onboard new platforms um, that don't have very tight integration with other parts of, of OpenShift yet. Um, it's a good, it's a really great starting point for those platforms. Yeah, I would say that it's some something in the middle between a fully customized 
uh, UPI installation where you control all the things, but you're also responsible for them to be valid and fully automatic API. So you get both the, the best of the both worlds. Um, there is also work happening about ARM64 builds, but I think Christian could speak about more about that. There is actually a another uh, talk starting in 15 minutes uh, by the CI folks um, touching on ex exactly that the multi-arch enablement for our Prowl build system. So um, if you want to learn more about that specifically, um, I suggest you join that talk in 15 minutes. Otherwise, I can just say we, we are working on it. We have our downstream build system actually already building that, which is why we have an, an OC. TP OpenShift uh, dev preview for 4.9 on ARM already. Uh, for OKD, we use um, the Prowl upstream uh, build system. And that is currently not yet enabled for ARM. Uh, we have a cluster build farm that we will be able to use. And hopefully soon, uh, we will be able to, to push out those first builds. Um, I think that's all from my side about the status and the general state of things. Um, do we want to help into questions, open floor type of things, or we have? Yeah, sounds like open floor is a good idea. Uh, yeah, and I will let our viewers know that we have opened, uh, we have started a couple polls um, to kind of get some information about uh, if you're using OKD and if so, how you're using it. So please uh, take a look at the polls too. And uh, yeah, feel free to add your questions in the chat here. Audio is coming in a bit weirdly on my end. I'm not sure. Can people hear me all right? Or is it? Is it does... It's just like it has been in the morning again. Yeah, it was, it was getting a little uh, kind of scratchy there for me, Christian. So it looks like we do have some poll results coming in. Um, and so far, we've got four votes for yes, uh, currently using OKD. And of those, we've got three votes for bare metal and one vote for public cloud. From what our telemetry tells us, that's very, very different, I would say. But that's the only data we get. so. This is the only thing we can base our decisions on. But the, the domination of the bare metal is very, very evident everywhere, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I will be the spoiler here. I do run OKD in AWS and GCP. So um, yeah, that's, I'm outing myself as the, the it, I, I tend to run it there when I'm testing things and whatnot and trying things out. So for me, it's like those, those pathways work really well, but I can totally understand why our community, um, you know, loves bare metal and loves vSphere and whatnot, because, you know, those are, those are great deployment platforms.
Uh, okay, I, th I think I've added you, Christian. I'm, I, I really only have one button on the interface here. It's a little green plus button. So, like, I, I guess that's what I'm supposed to click. <laughs> So Vadim, while we're while we're here, like I'm I am super curious about the C groups V2 stuff. And I know I know you just went through it all, but like at a really high level, you know, as a user, what do I get out of like pushing to use like C groups too and everything? Like would this be noticeable to me as an operator or an end user? As at this point, you get well, exactly the same experience as you get with C groups U1 because um, you are limited by CRI interface. Um, if you want to do a bad thing, you can get your hands dirty and uh, actually adjust the C group CV2 things of the containers that are already spawned, but the Kubernetes and OpenShift will be totally unaware of that. Uh, the best part of it is that the road it opens. We're using a, a modern kernel interface, meaning we get more features. So eventually the CRI interface would start evolving and folks who are already on C groups U2 would get additional features like IO block, uh, limiting IO is basically what people want at this point. Uh, and so on and so forth. The C groups V1 would, would start fading away just like we have seen uh, with the Docker. But at this point they have feature parity because C groups V2 is uh, CRI interface is, is very strict. And I guess how does that so how does that mesh with the concept of people wanting to start running like Kubernetes workloads on like Windows uh, clients and whatnot? Like is there any feature parity mismatch between the C groups functionality that Linux provides um, and what perhaps Windows is providing through its container runtimes? This is this is basically the question which CRI folks would have to answer. Do they want to have a different version? Um, how do they want to structure this protocol when the feature parity starts being very, very different in various uh, uh, roles? I'm not very familiar with that, but I'm pretty much sure we will see something what, what's happening with uh, Kubernetes. Like we would have V1 alpha, which is a very, very basic version v1 beta where we would be able to enable maybe additional features and so on um it's all up in the air i'm not very familiar with that uh, but a lot of interesting things are happening in the container runtime now now speaking of which for instance fedora now defaults to a container runtime called cron which is a c based version of the run c let's call it like that um, the benefit is that it's much faster um, instead of tens of uh, hundreds of milliseconds, which it takes to con for containers just to run, we would have tens of milliseconds, like 50 or 70. Um, there is also a Rust based container runtime called Yoki, um, which has similar features and uh, performance rates. So in OKD, thanks to cryo interface, we would be able to swap them uh, or either by default, or you would be able to define a runtime class where you would say, I want, these are the workloads I want to run super, super fast. So these are the workloads which should be using cron or Yoki or whatever else you want. Um, so all of these new features happening with CRI are very, very exciting. And while they don't give you additional features you can make use of, but the performance should be much, much better than we are previously used to. That's really cool. I mean, it's, it's really fascinating to see like what's happening with all these different kind of like container runtimes. And I mean, I didn't, I know there's a lot of work going on with Rust. So it's really cool to hear about like Rust runtime and everything. So, you know, really interesting look into the community. Yeah, so there is also kata containers. I'm not entirely sure if we already have the operator from them in the community catalog, but if not, that's definitely something we'll be looking on. That one is more focused on security and uh, virtual machines instead of plain container runtimes. But all of these features are very, very exciting to us, kind of low level engineers. They're probably not very interesting for people who want to deploy pods, but uh, for us, it's really, really uh, fun stuff. 
I feel it, like in general, we've made great progress in terms of, of maturity over the last year. Um, so OpenShift feels much, much more mature. And we, we've been able to kind of split out a few parts from the core um, into optional operators. And that, that is really great for us too, because we have to maintain um, less for just the core functionality. Um, while the operators uh, we can now use for delivering any additional um, stuff like kata containers support. And although that might actually have to be in, in the base OS uh, specifically. I'm, I'm not sure about that. But other things like Windows container support, um, things like that, or Windows nodes support on the cluster, those can now be added uh, as, as an operator to the, to, uh, the OKD deployment, which I think um, is just marvelous. I really like it. Um, and yeah, for us, it's great because we have to ship less in the core payload when we uh, can can split things like logging uh, out of it. And um, I, I do hope that we will, and I think we will uh, continue down that path further and reduce the, the minimum viable needed uh, payload even more, um, reduce the footprint for that thereby, and still enable all the use cases by just adding adding them uh, back as as optional operators from operator hub. And we've already actually, maybe as a uh, kind of preview, we are now very actively working on getting an OKD specific operator catalog up, so we can uh, really deliver those uh, operators that uh, have kind of been missing in OKD so far, or were difficult to get. Um, to, to make them a first uh, first class citizen and uh, make installation of, of those operators uh, super easy, which we hope will will obviously lead to more uh, of, yeah more participation and uh, especially people just uh, using their OKD clusters in a in a productive way. Uh, for example, yeah, the pipelines operator is a good example. The, the one uh, that's the one based on Tecton, and there's uh, multiple other operators that we wish to ship in a in that catalog, so it's, it's going to be very easy to actually install them. Right now, you'd have to build them yourself in some uh, in some cases. If you're not, if you don't have a subscription, obviously, if you, if you install it, OK, you have the uh, OpenShift subscription. You can install all the OpenShift operators on top of OKD as well. Um, without the subscription, you'll need to either build them yourself right now or wait for our OKD catalog. So yeah, I know I know that's a topic that's really you know popular in the community. Um, you know, we 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 were we're talking kind of the low level stuff. Now we're talking kind of the high level stuff, the operators and whatnot. Um, I guess like, and this is a question that I see come up frequently around the community is like, you know, uh, Red Hat has its operator catalog for you know kind of the OpenShift container platform and OKD. Um, you know, there's the open source kind of operator hub.io. And I know Christian, you were just talking a little bit about you know the community having interest in in kind of like making this better. I wonder if we could if we could talk a little more about like you know what the community might be trying to do um, you know to to make this more achievable. Yeah. So uh, we are thinking. I'm sorry, by the way, if my audio is. Uh, is that I have bad incoming audio is probably the same on the outgoing side. Um, so what we're actually going to do uh, is, is we'll set up a sub working group uh, focused on the operator catalog and on operators. So people that either have their own operator they, they wish to specifically release to OKD, um, or people who use one of the optional operators. So they have a platform to. Uh, a forum to, to discuss all the uh, things specific to that. Um, that is also so we on the core side I can kind of focus on that more, and we have a dedicated um, forum for the for the operators. And I think that will be a great, uh, yeah, just just a great group um, to to join if you're interested in in one of those uh, optional operators specifically and um, the use cases for that. I know uh, Diane, who isn't here today. Um, She's also very interested, obviously, always in, in hearing what the community does with uh, with OKD and with these operators. Because she's not only uh, um, the community director for OKD, 
also, I think, for uh, for the operator hub. Um, so she's going to be interested in, in all of these use cases. And if, if there's folks in the, in the community who are already using an operator um, or in the future want to participate in, in that group, uh, definitely uh, yeah, hit Diane up with that. And you might, uh, you might be presenting at the next time. Then. So I'm going to try to summarize a little bit because your audio got a little got a little difficult there. But so it it sounds like in summary though, the working group is gonna is gonna create a subgroup that's going to look directly at kind of like operator hub and how we can make it easier for the community to get involved in these things. And they're also going to help to act as a liaison to make those uh, interactions a little easier for people. Is that is that kind of the general gist of things? Cool. So just uh, checking the poll again, we're, we're now up to six yeses for using OKD, and we've we've gained our first vSphere vote and one more bare metal vote as well. I'm going to rejoin in one second. I don't know. Uh, what, 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 sounds good, Christian. Yep. Well, I mean, actually, it sounds terrible, but like the idea sounds great. <laughs> So I'll, I'll kind of ask an open-ended question here. What what are you looking forward to for the future of OKD in like you know as over the next couple of years, like as we move towards OpenShift 5.0 or whatever in some nebulous future? What what are your kind of high points? What would you like to see OKD achieve, or what would you like to see happen in the community? Oh wow. Um... I'm definitely interested in participation in a lot of things. We started adding fancy new components like MetaLB and other network things. I don't quite understand how they work, but I'm pretty sure community is very excited about them. Uh, we definitely want to get them used, like experimented with them and which features are lacking, which are more interesting than the others and let it be a gateway for the people to participate in upstream we kind of have already did this with the long-standing that was an example of why we're, we're running 40 uh, fedora 34 right now we are blocked by uh fedora change in Linux that triggered a bug rather the change was we were, we were not allowed to revert it because it makes sense. It was stricting the handling of TMP files, but Kubernetes tests were relying on that feature to pass a critical conformance test. As a result, um, Mustafa, who was a new hire for us, had to dive in into the whole world, and his mission was not just fix it in the, uh, in the OKD, we don't want this test to be skipped or passing for us. We want the whole issue to be resolved by fixed in Kubernetes. Then it got uh, cherry picked into a previous version, which we're more interested in. Um, then the OKD was rebased on top of Kubernetes. And then finally, our tests were rebased on that version of Kubernetes. So it took quite a while, but the whole issue is now just eradicated entirely it's not just patched and, and hacked this is probably what i would be very very interested for people to see that means they would commit to okd and the whole kubernetes idea for quite a long time because they would have to invest quite a lot of effort to get this done it's not just patching one line of code it's uh, communicating with a bunch of people but in the end you get the result and everybody benefits from it and you 
understand how the whole communities work while well, you're not even paid to get this done. But this is the, the actual right way how we are envisioning the communities are supposed to work. So um, if not, if people would be using the um, fixing Kubernetes bugs once they encounter them in OKD, then our mission is one of the goals is definitely completed. We have introduced people for the communities and they benefit from the, uh, they reap the, what the community has sown. Um, when it comes to technical features, um, I don't even know. I can even dream what's going to happen in five years because previously the things, like the whole idea of a system installer was, was crazy to me. I couldn't imagine that you can just click next, next, next through and you get a, a cluster. I'm thinking a more focused on security would be uh, the key there. Kata containers is definitely a huge feature which people would use. Um, I'm not quite familiar with what's happening with operators, but I'm definitely sure that operator hubs would be growing both in quality and in quantity of the containers they're getting. Um, for instance, I remember there is a OpenShift Commons meeting focused on databases specifically in Kubernetes. I'm thinking that more and more these kind of events would be happening, like focus on pipelines, on logging, and maybe on who knows. So this kind of a qualitative growth is definitely what what uh, what we'd like to see. I think, I mean, I think that's, that sounds really exciting. Like from the community perspective, it's, it's tremendously exciting to hear about kind of the investment in making this a pathway for people to be able to contribute all the way upstream, whether it's, you know, Fedora or Kubernetes or the Linux kernel or whatever. Um, and yeah, then, you know, kind of on the, on the workload user side of it, like that's really cool as well, kind of reaching out and, and making it a, a much better platform to run on. So it sounds very exciting to me. So what what do people in the chat think? Anybody in the chat got questions or comments or you got you got Vadim here all lined up ready to answer some questions. So so dig deep. Yeah, so Stuart says, definitely excited to have more operators on the OKD Operator Hub. That, that, is, that is a request that we see very commonly from the community. Right, the whole thing with the OKD catalog of operators is that we don't want them just to be built there and rot. We want the Red Hat teams to participate, to benefit from user reports, from experiments and things, how they envision this whole thing working. This is why it's taking quite a long time because we have a lot of parties to, to be satisfied. We have some early adopters who want to jump the ship right now, but um, we still need to align quite a lot of parties because we don't want to mess it up when we launch it. Um, other than that, yeah, I mean, the whole the writer's ID is apparently sticking, which is great here. That means people can uh, communicate via the community version of the operator hub and okay, the users would automatically get it. Um, I'm also quite excited what people uh, would love to, to build with operators. For instance, the whole uh, matrix synapse setup, which requires um, uh, Postgres, Reddit, Reddit, uh, Redis, um, uh, a Python application, and some more workers is a great fit for the operators because the workers are expected to be scalable. And uh, other than that, it's a pretty standard operation. So that's a great target for things. This is where I'm thinking we would, this is what I would love to see more, like the end user applications which they can run right now, even if it's a basic operator, but nevertheless, it's incredibly useful because um, from what I'm seeing, a lot of people build a cluster and it just stands there waiting while 
they could make use of it running some useful and level applications. And during the summer's short OKD summit, if I can call it like that, uh, the home lab session was filled with people who are running quite a lot of interesting applications for their own personal use. They don't care about HA. They don't care about that their YAML manifests are, are, are muddy, but they make use of it. And that's the, the whole point of the OKD. Kind of in, in that same area for me uh, would be something like a next cloud operator. There is already a next cloud helm chart um, that is easy to deploy. Um, but automating that with uh, the operator SDK, because it has that capability, obviously, to automate uh, helm chart deployments, or even making it a proper Go uh, operator would, yeah, would just be awesome. And I think, yeah, having those operators in their matrix, next cloud, um, that will be interesting, not just for self hosts, but also for just smaller smaller companies that want to uh, run their own services um, and things like that, or smaller institutions. It doesn't have to be a company. It could be a small school uh, that uses Nextcloud and, and Matrix for that chat app or a university or whatever. Um, so yeah, I, I do like that we, that we have made it easier to create those operators and that we're still continuing down that path because I think that that pattern of, of operators that just might manage themselves on the autopilot, as I like to say, um, it's just amazing. So Christian, uh, we got here uh, because I had asked uh, Vadim this question while you um, were fixing your uh, technical issues there. And I guess I'll pose the same question to you just to see maybe uh, where you're at on this. But I, I had asked Vadim, you know, kind of over the next year, two years, three years, you know, what are you looking forward to most in OKD? Like, uh, you know, what, what are your kind of visions or, or things that you would love to see, you know, happening or occurring over the next couple of years? So with my OKD user hat on, I would uh, really like that further reduction of the footprint, um, make it possible to run OKD on maybe not the current Raspberry Pi 4, but definitely on the Raspberry Pi 5, um, something which hopefully will come, well, not this year, but probably next. Uh, definitely on a smaller footprint, on ARM, um, just more efficiently uh, using less power um, or with less power consumption. Um, that would be super interesting for me. There's also um, a thing where it's not really HA, but it's kind of HA. It's like a an AB deployment of two single node um, OpenShift uh, deployments, which would kind of fall over to the other one. Um, I think that would be amazing if, if you have like a machine that is big enough, but you still want that. It, well, it is HA in, in that case, um, it just isn't is the real Kubernetes HA. Um, it's just two, two single nodes. That would be interesting. So you could kind of do, do something uh, like HA with just two machines and still get the full uh, the full ability of, of your full OKD cluster, uh, the capability of that. Um, yeah, and I, I think those edge use cases are going to be super interesting. I mean, deploying an OKD cluster at home is, by definition, an edge deployment. Um, so yeah, I think that's going to be that's going to be interesting. And obviously, uh, we we are working on that further to to minimize the core um, and uh, reduce the footprint there without compromising, obviously, on on functionality. You can always add add those operators back uh, through Operator Hub. Um, yeah, so I'm 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 excited. It's gonna be it's gonna be just better from here on. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's I, I think that's a really interesting answer about the smaller put, footprint and everything because we do see a lot of requests, you know, people curious about single node deployments and how they could maybe uh, set up a development you know system where they could try out OpenShift. I wonder, you know, I know inside Red Hat there's a lot of a lot of work on creating single node uh, type architectures, but I'm curious if maybe you could talk about how that um, how that's happening in the community. Single node clusters are very, very like get a large share of, of our user base. That's for sure. The problem with them is they are mostly used for development, and people want don't want ninety percent of the features that OKD provides. Like 
if you're running a single node, you probably don't even need SDN. And um, probably you don't even need an image registry as well. You can just use Quay um, and things like that, like monitoring and stuff like that. The thing is, we are pretty large scope project, which is falling into the category of what CRC and what MicroShift are doing. We're kind of overlapping. And while it would definitely be great to use less memory and things like that, but maybe there is a better tool for this whole job. Like there is a MicroShift specifically designed to run on uh, single board computers. It has Flannel instead of uh, OVN, which uses much less. It has some components removed, which you probably won't need because you don't build stuff uh, and store them on the image registry on the edge. You just get deployed images directly. And there is a CRC specifically designed to be created, torn down just for quick development uses. And this, uh, there are areas where we overlap and probably these are not the areas where, where we're supposed to be expanding. And maybe there is a better way of more um, fully community driven uh, open source system, which is not covered by CRC and the microchip. So while it's definitely great to have less resource consumptions, there are still better tools for the for the task. Um, it's really great to see a lot of innovation happening in those different areas because that lifts quite a huge um, mountain from our shoulders where we don't have to rip out quite a lot of things to make OKD run on, on uh, Raspberry Pi. There is a microchip for that. Um, well, what's the, the relationship with MicroShift, actually. Doesn't that use OKD under the hood? In yes. Some, at least partly? It uses pieces of the, uh, it uses images, it uses Fedora IoT, which is effectively Fedora CoreOS, but specifically for ARM and with a slightly different focus. So we share a lot of things like Fedora packages, images for base, but yet they're still entirely separate entity and they have make their own choices we have we make our own choices it's great that we can share quite a lot of well, they don't have to reinvent stuff from the beginning but uh we definitely should should be in touch in contact with them the inviting them onto board group meetings would be lovely but yet we have to be aware that maybe some use cases are better handled by microchip and ogd should just not spend quite a lot of time fixing them. I, I actually haven't, that, that hasn't been on my radar too much. Uh, I had heard about it, but I wasn't really sure uh, what what they do and how they do things. Um, that sounds more like I should probably be, de de be deploying Microshift here at home. Um, but uh, well, I, I think, yeah, let, I will I will send out an invitation to those uh, to, to that team so they can maybe just uh, you know come join and uh, present what they're doing there uh, to us here at the working group so we just uh, build awareness of each other. Um, yeah, I, I think obviously that there there will be some separation of concerns, um, which some things are rather going to be handled by Microsoft and others uh, by OKD. But it would be good to to just be aware of what the other side is doing. So I will invite them to one of our next meetings. And uh, just as a heads up here, we're, we're just about at a little, about five minutes left in this session. So, um, you know, for people in chat, if you've got a burning question you need to get out or something you need to say to Christian or Vadim, like, now's your chance. Well, I, I hope uh, this session was uh, entertaining and uh, informational, uh, infotainment, uh, you might call it, um, to everybody here. Um, and I think, yeah, we're almost at time. There's no more questions. I'm just, my, my audio lag is starting again. I don't know what this is. Um, well, time to, time to flush everybody. the buffers again, right?
Yeah, well, exactly. uh, a big, big thank you to Vadim and Christian uh, for joining us today and, and for answering questions and for sharing this, you know, the vision of OKD and kind of what's going on. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Mike.